What people fail to understand about EVE Online, and sadly what most players never realize, is that the PvP system is as dynamic, rich, and complex as the most well-renowned strategy games. What often happens is that those players who bother with PvP at all experience it from the most basic level or from the large fleet point of view, what we call a blob. They never get a chance to dig into the basic factors that will really affect tactics. These factors are weapon types and how to apply their damage, defensive tanks such as shields, armor, and hull, control modules such as stasis webs and warp scramblers, and speed and maneuverability which determines how you will position your ship. Determining which of the three basic PvP tactics to use depends on a combination of all of these factors. The three basic PvP tactics are brawling, kiting, and sniping. Although you can mix these three sometimes, the meta of the game is divided between them. Brawling is the simplest form of PvP. Brawling means closing in on the target and slugging it out at close range. This is usually within warp scrambling range or under 10 kilometers. This way ships equipped with the super fast micro warp drive module are not able to speed away to long range since scrams shut those down. Most EVE weapons are separated into two categories, long range and short range, so a good example of a brawling ship is something like a Thorax class cruiser armed with blasters since blasters can dish out high damage at close range. Closer range weapons such as blasters or autocannons track and hit the targets fairly easily. Most of the time, brawling ships with fast tracking weapons will orbit the target. By orbiting a target, you can increase the transversal and decrease the amount of hits scored by enemy turrets. Of course, this doesn't matter much if the target ship also has fast tracking turrets or has weapons that do not rely on tracking such as missiles, rockets, or drones. An example of this I can think of is something like a small Atron class frigate orbiting a thorax where the thorax has rail guns. The Atron is able to use its transversal and minimize the damage from those rail guns because the rail guns aren't as good as tracking as something like a blaster. This is called getting under the guns. A brawly ship does not always concern itself with speed so much as grabbing the target and delivering the damage. Therefore, they can often dedicate more of their modules to tanking rather than speed. So those are the tactics of a brawl, but what about the strategies? Luckily, brawling is simple, meaning you can dedicate your mind to other things. You close in on the target, grab it, and beat the hell out of it. But against faster, more nimble ships, the opportunity to grab them often never presents itself. This is why often the best strategies for a brawl ship involve surprise, to catch a target before they realize they are caught, and then beat the hell out of them. Obviously, this works against people who aren't paying attention or freeze in terror. This can also work against someone who is overly eager to fight against their own better judgment. It can work well in combination with a bait ship. Such a bait ship could be anything. It could be a mining barge, it could be a hauling ship, it could be what appears to be a badly fit combat cruiser, but the idea is to trick them into coming in close so the bait ship can scram and web the victim and neither the bait ship is brawly or the ship that comes and rescues it is brawly. Brawling fails against an effective kiting strategy almost every time. If a brawler is not able to apply its heavy DPS close, but is still caught by a faster ship staying at range, this could mean trouble. Many PvP players are die-hard brawlers, and sometimes there is an irrational cultural rivalry against players who prefer other tactics, especially kiters. They will do anything to set up a close-range fight. Brawlers love their blaster ships such as the Merlin, Incursus, Daredevil, Thorax, Moa-class cruiser, Brutix and Ferox-class battlecruisers, and many others. They also like autocannon ships such as the Rifter, the Stabber, the Cinnable, the Macarial, and others. However, autocannons have slightly longer range projection than blasters. The opposite tactic of brawling is kiting. This means using longer range weapons, velocity, and maneuverability to keep the target at a comfortable range. This range can vary, but it's usually within warp disruptor range. For most ships, that's 15 to 25 kilometers. 
If the fight doesn't require warp disruption, or if you have a ship with a warp disruption range bonus, this can enlarge the battlefield of kiting ships. The whole idea here is not to get close. This requires speed and maneuverability. A lot of flying skill really helps with this. If a brawler manages to catch the kiter with webs or a warp scrambler to shut down the micro warp drive, the brawler can delete that kiter. But against a very skilled kiter, this is much easier said than done. A kiter with a speed advantage can stay at range against a brawler who is slower, and there is nothing that brawler can do about it. A kiter may choose to orbit the target and mitigate the enemy turret's tracking. This of course is only effective if the kiter has good tracking on their turrets, or is primarily using drones or missiles, which do not require as much tracking. But if the kiter is using a turret with slow tracking ability such as railguns or even slower artillery, and not scoring good hits, they will have to minimize the transversal to the target so that their weapons will hit. This means the keep it range tactic or flying away could be useful here. Both the keep it range and orbit commands are built into the flight system as automatic flying patterns, but a truly skilled kiter will also be capable of manually piloting their ship without using as much orbit or keep it range. Manual piloting means double clicking in space in the intended flight direction, sometimes doing this like a crazy mad person, or aligning to pre-planned points. A good brawler might try to slingshot or maneuver their way into grabbing the kiter. Also a group of ships may be able to corral and trap kiters from different directions. It is also simply much harder to keep track of who's closer to you when you're looking at several targets at once. All of these problems can be minimized with expert manual piloting. A group of overly eager brawlers can be strung out and destroyed one by one as they fly at the kiter, essentially charging right into their weapons but never catching them. This is the kiter's most delightful situation. Many experienced PvP pilots will simply leave rather than play to this tactic. There are many ships that can be fit for kiting. Some of the most common kiting ships are the Condor class attack frigate, the Imperial Navy Slicer, the Tristan, the Hated Garmer, which has a bonus to warp disruption range, and its bigger brother, the Orthrus class cruiser. The Beam Retribution Assault Frigate is another popular choice, the Omen Navy Issue Cruiser, the Triglavian Kikamora, and the Vedmac Cruiser, along with many others. The strategy of the Kiter is to start out the fight at their optimal kiting range or even beyond it. The most notorious kiters will often do anything they can to increase their speed to ridiculous levels by using snake implants or dead space modules. Any number of tricks can even allow them to outrun light missiles and Warrior II drones. The best kiting ships will travel between 3000 a second and up to 10,000 a second in the very extreme cases. Committed kiters are among the most hated PvPers. The reason for this is because they're often very effective and win a lot of fights without getting in close and dirty. Kiters are often called by brawlers cowards or risk averse. My personal opinion is that it does take quite a bit of skill, especially if you're not using snake implants, to be an effective kiter. Set up the right fight. A good kiter wins more often than not, so I respect this, but some of them are arrogant, so when they do get caught and blown up by a brawler or a sniper, it's quite delightful indeed. The third type of basic PvP tactic is sniping. This is blasting an unsuspecting target from a comfortable range with a lot of damage before they have a chance to react. The optimal snipe is to obliterate the target with a single shot, or alpha strike, though it may take more than one. The most common sniping weapon is artillery cannons. Artillery has poor tracking, slow volleys, and reload time, but they also have the highest blast damage in any single shot. Long range missiles also have high alpha damage without the tracking problems of artillery, but missiles have some flight time to the target. Also reloading the missile launcher takes a very long time. The right sentry drones can also be very good sniping weapons. Railguns can be effective snipe weapons. Beam lasers are okay but cycle faster with less volley damage. A sniper pilot is conscious of their position and range to the target, but will set this up mostly before engaging. Most people think of sniping as a very long range, covert form of attack. This type of sniper is not interested in using warp disruptors, warp scramblers, or stasis webifiers, but 
insta-blapping the enemy with shock and awe. But sometimes, the range is irrelevant. It only matters that the target remains still enough to hit and destroy quickly. So sometimes, a sniper can set up at relatively close range and use stasis webifiers to still the target to a crawl. Sniping strategy can be effectively used in many creative ways that will emotionally fluster the opponent more than any other tactic, since it usually comes as such an unexpected shock. You may often see a sniping tornado perched at some distance from a station or a stargate waiting for someone to undock or come through the gate. They would be equipped with sensor boosters for fast target acquisition and tracking computers to boost their artillery turret range. You may see a pack of arty thrashers doing something similar at a much smaller and cheaper scale. This can be done with railgun cormorant destroyers, often called longbow cormorants, or missile destroyers such as the Tawar and Korax. Drone ships may surprise opponents who expect combat drones, but are instead blapped by snipey sentry drones. As stated before, I mentioned that there are sometimes combinations between these three tactics. One notable combination is the scram kite tactic, which is fighting at the outer edge of scram range rather than at point blank range. Some ships are capable of doing both brawling and kiting, and often by only switching their ammo type. Well, that pretty much covers the three basic types of PvP in EVE. If you're interested in joining a small gang PvP group, come check us out. We are Interstellar Booty Hunters. You can email me in game for interest. My character name is Maximilian Bonaparte, and you can find it in our public chat room, the Booty Tiki Bar. All of this will be in the description guys, below. Jump on also, please comment. Tell me which of these three tactics works best video. for you and why. I really love reading comments. Of course, subscribe and watch as many of my videos as you can. Until next time, space friends.